Hi guys, and welcome to The Family Fudge. Today, I'm back with more of my favorite Pioneer Woman-inspired recipes. First up, I'll be making beef and snow peas. This dish is quick and easy, and the whole family loves it. After that, I'm gonna show you how I make my version of cheesy chicken Parmesan soup. This gives you all the flavor of traditional chicken Parmesan, but in half the time. Now, before we get into the recipes, I wanna share a little bit about a recent trip John and I took to Pahuska, Oklahoma, to visit the Pioneer Woman's restaurant, store, and lodge where she films her Food Network show. We had breakfast at the restaurant in the morning. So here we are at the mercantile. I learned that recently, the Pioneer Woman herself pronounces it mercantile and not mercantile. But usually this place is super crowded and there's a long wait. But since it was freezing cold outside, it wasn't too bad. I ordered the biscuits and gravy breakfast, which was so good. It definitely reminds me of my grandmother's biscuits and gravy. And John got the cheesy grits, which was really tasty, but very soupy. You can tell here a little bit of it spilled over. After that, we went out to visit the lodge. I was seriously blown away by her awesome pantry. It had everything you could ever need, and it was super organized. After that, we saw the main kitchen where the show is filmed. There were a lot of people at this tour, but not very many kids. Now this tour is actually free. Anybody can go as long as they're having the tours, which are usually just on the weekends. We also found out that there is a second huge kitchen and prep space, along with a giant storage room that holds all the dishes and props for the show. This was such an amazing visit. I love the Pioneer Woman, so this was a really neat experience. If you ever get the chance to visit, I highly recommend it. Now, I also wanted to give you a quick tour of the Airbnb that we stayed at while we were in Pahuska. It was a cute little one bedroom place that was nicely decorated with a large bathroom. Now, unfortunately, it was too cold while we were there to enjoy the porch, rocking chairs, but you guys, it was literally right down the street from the mercantile, only about half a block away. So we could walk back and forth while we were there. Now, unfortunately, I did not get to meet Ree herself on this trip, but you never know, maybe I can in the future. Now, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button if you're new. Now let's get cooking. First up, I'll be making beef and snow peas. Here's what you're going to need. Now the Pioneer Woman's recipe calls for one and a half pounds of flank steak, but I actually don't have any flank steak today, so I'm gonna be using the more economical ground beef. Her recipe also calls for half a cup of low sodium soy sauce, three tablespoons of sherry, which I don't have, so I'm gonna leave it out, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one tablespoon of fresh ginger, eight ounces, of fresh snow peas, and five scallions. Now you could add salt to taste with this, but I'm actually not gonna add any salt until the very end because I am using a lot of soy sauce. And then this part is optional, but you could use some red pepper flakes if you wanna spice it up. And then I'm going to serve this on top of some rice. So I'm gonna get my rice started right now. In a bowl, you're going to mix your soy sauce, your sherry if you've got it, your brown sugar, cornstarch, and your ginger. Now, if you're using the steak, you can actually use half of this to marinate your steak at this point. But since I'm using ground beef, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna set my sauce aside. Next, it's time to trim the snow peas. Each snow pea has a little fibrous point on the end of it, so I definitely wanna trim those off. Next, I'm going to cut up my green onions, or scallions, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna cut these green onions into half inch sized pieces, and I'm gonna cut them on the diagonal. I think they just look a lot prettier that way. Now it's time to quickly cook our snow peas. In a large skillet over high heat, I'm gonna add my olive oil and quickly cook my snow peas, just about 45 seconds. This part is very much like a stir fry. Now I'm going to remove my snow peas and set them aside. And now it's time for our beef. I'm gonna add my ground beef to my pan and kind of spread it out and break it up. And then I'm gonna leave it alone for a couple of minutes to let some of it get brown. When your meat is about halfway cooked, you can go ahead and add your sauce. Now this is where my recipe is different than hers because I am using the ground beef and not the steak. 
And of course, you can find the original Pioneer Woman's recipe on her website. And now I'm just gonna let this cook until the meat is all the way done and the sauce has thickened. Definitely taste it for seasoning. You may want to add more salt and pepper. It's totally up to you. Now if you have a lot of sauce, it should thicken as it cools. And now it's time to plate it up. I take a big scoop of my rice and a big scoop of my meat and snow pea mixture. So I'm definitely gonna put a little bit of red pepper flakes on mine because I like it spicy. And don't forget the green onions or scallions. I'm gonna sprinkle those on the top. They really add a bright, fresh flavor to your dish. And now it's time to dig in. Mm, it smells so good in here, you guys, and this is excellent. I hope you love it. Now let's make some delicious, cheesy chicken parmesan soup. First off, we have the chicken. I'm gonna be using about one pound of boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and these are actually tenders. Um, you can use whole breast if you'd like, that's totally fine, but this makes it really easy to just chop them up. And then I'm gonna be using a lot of cheese. I have both Parmesan cheese and mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna be using some penne pasta. Now mine is gluten-free, but if you wanna use regular, go ahead and do that. I'm also gonna be using tomato paste and diced tomatoes. I have some Italian seasoning some coconut oil, garlic, onion, salt and pepper, some chicken broth. And this part is optional, but since I needed it for another recipe, I have some parsley. So the first thing I'm gonna do is chop up my chicken into bite-sized pieces. We're gonna season the chicken with some salt and pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and brown up this chicken in about two tablespoons of coconut oil. If you don't have coconut oil, you could definitely use olive oil. Now once I get the chicken in here, I'm actually gonna lay it out in a thin layer and just leave it there. I want it to get nice and brown before I stir it up. So now my chicken is browned. It may not be cooked all the way through, but that's totally fine because it's gonna go back into our soup later. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and scoop it out. That way we can brown our onions in the same pan. Okay, here's real life, guys. I walked away to help a child, and my onions got a little bit more caramelized than I had planned, but that's probably fine, no big deal. So right now I'm actually gonna add my crushed up garlic, and I'm gonna let that cook for about a minute, and then I'm gonna dump a bunch of other things in. All right, it's smelling delicious in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt and pepper at this point. Now this is to taste, of course, but I think I'm gonna start with half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And I'll probably give it a try closer to when it's done to see if it needs any more. Next comes my can of tomatoes. I'm also gonna be putting a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning three tablespoons of tomato paste, to this I'm going to be adding this entire container of chicken broth. This is 32 ounces. I'm going to give this a stir and let it simmer for about six to eight minutes and then I'm going to add my pasta. Mine are gluten-free, so my box says about 10 minutes for al dente, but you can follow the directions on your specific box. I'm just gonna add this whole thing in there. I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer for eight minutes and check the doneness of my pasta at that point, because I don't wanna overcook my pasta. The time is up on my pasta. So I'm gonna take out just about a spoonful. 
and I'm gonna test it and make sure that the noodles are all the way done. And I'm also gonna check and see if it needs any more salt or pepper. Now I am gonna be adding quite a bit of cheese into here, so I, I don't wanna add too much salt. The noodles are perfectly cooked, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the stove. But I am gonna shake in a little bit more salt and just a teeny bit more pepper. To your taste, of course. I'm gonna give that a stir. Now this isn't a very liquidy soup. Most of it's absorbed into the pasta. So it's on the thicker side. Well, that's good for my little kids. It's less messy. Now for the cheese. I have one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese and one five ounce container of shredded Parmesan. I'm gonna go ahead and add half of this container and half of this cup of cheese into our pot. I wasn't kidding when I called this dish cheesy. And I'm actually gonna stir this into my dish. Now I'm gonna take the remaining cheese and just put it on the top. Just like that. There's my Parmesan. And here's the rest of my mozzarella. Parsley is optional, but now would be the time to garnish it up. The heat has been off for a while, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my lid on for maybe one to two minutes and let the cheese that's on top get nice and melted. And then it's ready to eat. All right, here it is. Ooh, that pot is heavy. Yum. Let's get us a bowl. Now to make this a little bit prettier, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit more mozzarella cheese and maybe a couple more sprinkles of parsley. Now as you can see, this soup isn't super soupy. So if you want it more on the thin side, maybe add more chicken broth. Definitely tastes like chicken parmesan. It doesn't taste like spaghetti with chicken at all. It's really good. I hope you guys love it.